High walls and fences mean nothing to a determined burglar, but you'd have thought that your average cylinder lock would hold up, wouldn't you? Well, in a few seconds, he's in your house, helping himself to whatever he can get his hands on for some quick cash. This bit of kit carries the kite mark and is built to police preferred specification. In most cases, all you'll need to replace are the cylinders. There's no need to change handles and other fittings. All it takes is a few minutes and it is a very easy job. Ha! He's in for a surprise. You know, you almost feel sorry for him, don't you? Your lock remains secure, protecting your property. Uh, bye, see ya! Well, in a few seconds. As soon as all these things go away and it's safe for me to travel on the train, I will. I will come down and sleep at your house and maybe we could go on a walk in the park. Love you loads, love you very much. Nanny Jean, Alan.
Okay, good afternoon and welcome to Platte Lane Sports Complex. Uh, we're back by popular demand this week. I'm joined by my regular partner, Kerry Almond. Hello, everybody. Uh, today's game is uh, obviously Manchester Thunder versus Celtic Dragons. So this should be um, an interesting one uh, to obviously see uh, where some of our youngsters are up to and obviously where Dragons are up to as well because we've not seen them for some time now. No, it's very interesting to see. We, we always uh, play Celtic Dragons in a pre-season friendly. Um, so, great to be back out against them today. So, should we uh, run through the teams today? Yep. So, the starting seven for Manchester Thunder. At goal shooter, we have Barry Neal. Goal attack, Lois Pearson. Wing attack is Alicia Scholes. Centre is Amy Carter. Wing defence, Elliot McCormack. Goal defence is captain Emma Dovey and goalkeeper is Rebecca Airy. Celtic Dragons today start with former Thunder shooter Amy Clinton, goal attack Laura Rudland, wing attack Shona O'Dwyer, centre Claire Jones, wing defence Christina Shaw, goal defence Abby Tyrrell, again another former Thunder player, and goalkeeper, and one I'm interested to see today, is Annika Lee Jones. Yeah, me too. Um, obviously really interesting to see what experience she brings over, obviously, um, after having come over from uh, two years at Sunshine Coast Lightning um, and a year at West Coast Fever, so really interesting to see what she brings to the Dragons team today. Obviously they are missing um, Latonya Wilson, their keeper from last year, who's moved over to the Adelaide Thunderbirds for the coming season. Um, and then obviously Annika Lee Jones has uh, made the trip this way and uh, 
to get a bit more experience under her belt. Yeah, I mean, I, I was really quite a fan of, of Latanya Wilson. I thought she um, kind of took the league by storm, and yeah, there was a, a little bit of controversy um, with the with the sending off earlier in the season, but um, just the, the athleticism and flair that she that she brought, and almost along the lines of Shamira Sterling. So I was really interested to see how she'd progress, but obviously she's uh, in, impressed more and and has been picked up by the Thunderbirds, as you say. So brought in Annika Lee Jones, someone um, of probably quite a different stature. Yeah, um, but coming, so. But coming from um, a great background, as you say, um, at Lightning, didn't get that much game time, really, because she sat behind Guns and Away in it and Carla Pretorius. Yeah. Difficult pair to uh yeah i mean she obviously went to spending a year on the bench behind courtney bruce and stacy francis and then obviously sitting behind the south african defensive pairing so two pretty tough um combos to try and break through um but now she's she's come over here to, to get some more court time under her belt and uh, this is our first look at her today so um let's see what she can do up against that young shooting pairing for thunder yeah, so looking at the Thunder team today, obviously there's, uh, there's some notable absences. Um, we're without five players today that are unavailable, but I'm really interested to see how this young side fare today. So we've got the young partnership. It, well, in fact, the attacking triangle there is a product of, uh, of our pathway. And, well, to be fair, you look through the whole team, it's a product of our pathway, but it'll be really interesting to see how they fair today. And then you've got the uh, the all experienced head of Henry who vastly brings up the age um, average age of this team uh, taking a cracking in set to start this game. She won't thank me for saying that. <laughs> yeah, a bit of a wayward pass there from, from Liz Scholes into the corner which Claire Jones picks up. Interesting to know that co-captain Sophie Morgan's not starting this game, another from the player in the Dragons team. Um, but I've no doubt we'll see her at some point. Um, burning that mid-foot up the speed. Great strong work there from Becky Airy in the circle, really shutting down Amy Clinton and then just coming out and taking that nice easy one. Yeah, great, uh, obviously saw it early and great footwork in getting out there for it. Class Rebecca now is one of the more experienced of the team. So her along with Emma and, uh, and Amy Carter. Uh, very nearly couldn't quite finish that one off and Annika Lee Jones just mocked with the rebound but there we go, Becky Airy again coming over the goods it's a really good chance for Becky to, to show what she can do in the keeper today obviously with no Lauren um, I mean I know we, we all know what she can do uh, but let's just see with some more games on the keeper and there we are, the first goal after a minute and a half yeah, there was certainly some back and forth there plenty of turnover to start the game the team's just taking a bit of time to settle down so we talk about Emma Dovey and the experience she brings there. Obviously, Emma played in front of you for many years yeah. uh, throughout your whole your whole Thunder career. Um, now, what does someone? Uh, it's, yeah, last week we talked very much about the goal. Oh, there she goes again. There we go. Right on cue. And I was so, going Emma for that. Yeah. So we we spoke last week about the around the goalkeeper position. Um, what do you, you know? What's great? Uh, what kind of goal defence do you like to play with? What did I, you know? What does Emma bring to this team? Emma just shows a great tenacity um, through the court. She's not afraid to have a go at something, um, but generally she makes really, really good decisions about when she does go on something. So she's not the kind of goal defence that's just going to go willy nilly on everything um, and then leave her keeper exposed with, you know, dealing with a goal shooter and then having a goal attack running at her. Um, so she's incredibly clever. I think she's very underrated on that front. Um, she's got great drive and determination, and you know she's uh, she's surprisingly strong for one of her stature. Um, and she just doesn't give an inch in that circle. She's not afraid to put the hard work in and, and uh, get a bit of physicality if needed. Absolutely, as you say, she's she's been a stalwart of, of this team, and, and I think one of the more underrated players in Super League. And she's played since we took over in 2008 she's played every season she's been you know, one of our most reliable players throughout the years she's won three trophies with us um, you know it's, and it's a shame that sometimes you know when you players have to make a choice of you know of a career or playing for England and for some it's you know they, they have to choose the career yeah I mean obviously we we spoke about that um, 
last week as well um, in detail. And Emma is obviously, unfortunately, of that generation where we've had to make decisions based on careers. And so hopefully a lot of these young players now that are out on the court don't have to make those decisions. Um, and we, this area of Super now is kind of hopefully paving the way to go towards a more professional area where the players don't have to make that choice. And right on cue, there's another interception there. Oh. She must be leading, leading the stats there. So Emma was probably one of the best people I actually saw for um, marking Pamela Cookie so well. I mean, yep. Pamela Cookie was absolutely brilliant player, and you know she she starred for both Bath and Surrey Storm, and always a tough opponent. But the the one player that I think Emma was um, a little bit of a nemesis for her, maybe. Yeah, it was always a really really good battle. Um, I know for me personally. If Pam Cookie was always on the op opposite team, then I always wanted Emma to be um, out at, at goal defence. Um, Pam certainly didn't like the style of play, um, but as, a, as an attacker, you don't like that niggly kind of defender that's going to run you into the ground, and, and that's the kind of player that Emma is. And just as we saw there, um, just to build up to that last Thunder goal, some great vision straight from the centre third from Skulls right into the into Berry Neal at Shooter. That's showing a little bit of a dad's vision there. I think so, obviously. Yeah, I mean, she's uh, she's played for a long time with Lois and very happy, so she knows how they play. Um, and hopefully that should be a really, really good partnership today. That was a really good circus drive there from Sean O'Dwyer from the centre pass, but just can't quite find that gap through in that circle between Emma and Becky. So there, Amy Clinton takes the score. It's 7 4, the Thunder leading. So the young team showing well so far. A little bit of nervousness to start off, but they're really finding the flow now. And a great split there from Berry Neal. Really good peel off the back there and, and good vision over top of Abby. So I think it really shows you know, our pathway is clearly a successful pathway but underpinning all of that you've got the northwest region that is full of well it's great competition yeah. with the kind of clubs that we've got competing at such a high level week in week out and you've got your Oldhams, your Burries, Tameside, Kingsway Power now, Spruple Valley, there's Trafford, there's so many great clubs out there and that which I think shows in the fact that currently on court, out of the two teams, there's nine players that have come through Northwest Regional Pathways, um, which I think obviously is um, an amazing job by all the different coaches. Obviously, Karen Greg used to be the, the, uh, the head coach of the high performance for the region, um, and I think that's that's really helped that we've got these coaches that are also moving through the pathways as well. Um, and I think it, it's important not only for the players to, to come through that and see that there's a route for them, but it's also important for the coaches um, as well. Absolutely. You've got, to, you've got to have the quality coaches around. We're missing our head coach and director of netball, Karen Gregg, today. I'm sure she's uh, sat on a settee shouting at the TV. She will be shouting at us, to be fair. <laughs> Um, one thing we do want to say as well, obviously, as you can see that the players today are wearing black armbands. Um, and on behalf of Manchester Thunder um, and everyone involved, we obviously just want to pass on our condolences to um, Sacha Grant, who is the Saracens North West Coach, so who's been shot this week. So um, just sending her our thoughts on our little box at this difficult time. Yeah, there's one thing for sure the netball family comes together when it yeah. needs to. Yeah, and we saw um, earlier on today, uh, Team Bath and, and the Seven Stars also had fun and they were wearing our bands as well. Um, so I think, you know, we, we stick together and we support our own and I think this has shown it. Absolutely. Some really good rotational play in that circle between Lois and Berry, um, really making uh, Tyrrell and Lee Jones work hard for everything. Um, I think probably just using utilising the fact that they know each other so well, um, whereas obviously the Dragons is quite a new defensive pairing. Dakiari is working extremely hard against the height of Amy Clinton, and there we go, picks that one up as well. It's really good footwork around the body on that one. Yeah, the feeds in there, not quite making it. I mean, Amy Clinton is what, six foot two, six foot three maybe? Yeah. And it really, 
they need to put more on that pass in there. Because she, you know, as we know, Amy very well from Oldham. Yeah, she's got a she's good strong an easy, hold. Yeah, easy she's to find. So I think it's bony in all the right places. So they, yeah, they really, really need to improve that feed in there if they're going to make use of that really great feed there again to, uh, along the baseline to O'Neill. Long ball in. Yes, as we alluded to before, Karen Gregg, our head coach, just sat on the settee, smiling right now. Doing nothing. <laughs> Not doing much. Hope isolation's going very well. Hope you're wearing your Netball UK pyjamas. <laughs> and hope you haven't eaten your uh, isolation pack already. Obviously, if you don't know, Karen um, is going to be the head coach of the Super League All-Star side, which is going to be taking on the England Roses this week to obviously just replace the uh, the Legend series in the worst plus playing against Jamaica. How exciting is this? You know, the oh, England netball massive. have pulled out all the stops. Obviously, Jamaica didn't. Uh, Jamaica series didn't happen. We were very keen to get something going. I mean, we straight in there. If we can help in any way, you know, let's see if we can make something happen. And they came up with this concept of the All Stars, which I just think is brilliant. Just to see the best of the imports from Super League and Home Nations players. Just to, and and obviously to give a great game to our England Roses. We need them to keep playing. We need them to be playing at the highest level. And for all of those players that will be playing for the All-Stars too. They will get some great gameplay leading into it. Yeah, um, obviously we all read the announcement yesterday and obviously we know that's why uh, Joyce is not playing today. She's one of the players that were mentioned in that press release. Um, so she's off, off playing, which is a huge boost for her and obviously for, for Malawi as well. Um, I did read some comments yesterday on the back of that announcement basically saying that we don't think that um, this should be happening in the current climate, but to be honest, I think it's something that we, we do need to happen. They are going into biosecure bubble, and um, they are going to be tested. They can literally, they're not going to be seeing anyone from outside of those bubbles. So there's very little risk. Um, and obviously, I mean, the current climate is pretty difficult, but I think we all need something to, to give us a bit of a lift, a bit of a cheer. Um, and you can guarantee there will be no hugging or goal celebrations. <laughs> What's that balls of? Are better behaved than the footballers. There's just going to be a few elbow taps here and there. Yeah, exactly. And, and I think the great news that came from Super League last night, because all teams, players and staff, did the first round of testing ahead of the league, and every single test came back negative, which is brilliant news. It's such a great start. Um, and I think, you know, there's the work England Netball have been putting in uh, to get in the, to ensuring that the league goes ahead has been phenomenal. You know, particularly um, Ian Holloway and Jess Rogers, um, led obviously by Frank Connolly as well. There, with you know the, the whole, the amount of work that's gone in to making it happen is phenomenal. And I kind of want to give them a bit of a shout out because they have been working kind of 24/7 to make it happen. And the risk mitigations that have been put in place have been phenomenal so it is potentially the safest environment that we could have and if we can have some netball why not exactly Claire Jones there just being really really uh, clever and using all her experience there thought the ball go overhead and not take that centre pass uh, so that's the end of the first period and it's currently 15 goals to 9 in favour of Manchester Thunder
Okay, welcome back everybody. About to start the second quarter. Just trying to have a look and just see um, what changes are coming on. Um, I think we can see that Elliot McCormick is coming on to goalkeeper and Rebecca Airy is moving over to goal defence um, and Emma is going to take a well-earned rest after 12 minutes. And just a correction there, we had Ella Standring at wing defence, not Ellie McCormick. I blame it on the coach's writing. Two very similar names. <laughs> I'm not passing any comment on that one. Cause and we just note the... Um... Yeah, so Amy Clinton's gone off and I think we've got Morgan or Morgan Dunn um, on for Dragons at Shooter. I think, and I think we've got a new wing defence as well. Uh, I think Lydia Howells, I think, has come on to wing defence for Dragons as well. Becky Airy there carrying on um, from the first period, getting a tip on that one and Thunder take the sideline. Yeah, should we just talk about the. Uh, oh, Sophie Morgan, sorry, has come on to wing attack for Dragons as well. We'll talk about the uh, Thunder coaching bench today. We've got a very suitable replacement for Karen Gregg today. I don't know who this person is. So I can see Tracy Neville on the bench down there. Oh, is that it? It is. Yeah. Is Although that something uh, you need to tell us, baby? Our, our bench re renamed by Stephen Naylor as Test and Trace. <laughs> <laughs> so does that mean that Gabs is uh, Gabs is Test? test. And obviously, so Phil must be happy. <laughs> very very suitable replacement for Karen. Um, obviously. You know, being a former coach of Thunder and all that, she's, uh, I'm sure she's slotted um, in seamlessly. All I can say is that I'm glad I'm not in any of her training sessions anymore. <laughs> nice ball in there from Liss Skulls to Barry Neal, and she finishes that off calmly. Uh, I think Barry's playing really well today at goal shooter. She's uh, got a very calm head on her shoulders today, which is uh, obviously good to see, and it's good to see another youngster. Yeah, I think she, she came on last week and she did look very nervous to start with um, and took a little bit of time to settle. Whereas today, she looks fully in it, fully focused. And as we said, both teams had a, a little bit of a slow start, but she's really coming into the game. Yeah, I think it's uh, it's a bit of a, a change in style in that uh, shooting circle for them today with the more moving circle, more rotational style. Obviously, we're, we're fairly used to having either Joyce or Eleanor in there for a little bit more, um, a little bit more static. I'm not going to say it's completely static because they both do like to um, move around um, as well, but this is very, very rotational. Um, and it does obviously take a little bit of time for the centre court to get, get used to that as well from changing from one style to another, but... Um, like I said before, Liz has played with these two for years um, and you know Amy can pretty much just adapt to anything. Yeah, so I've got a couple of little shout outs today actually. We've, well, we've got a few questions coming up from social media that were posted throughout the week. Uh, but I wanted to say happy birthday to both Claire Christie and Suzanne Bass, two coaches from our Thunder Pathway. Happy birthday so, to you both. Happy birthday, we won't sing, no, don't worry. No, we won't put you through that. Nice high shot there from Laura Rudland as well, just took out the jump. And that was a great ball in from Liz Goals as well. It's just a shame it wasn't let go. Good jump there from Abby. Um, so we know that quite well from, from Oldham. Um, she's uh, quite well known for blocking the shot as well yeah I think Abby really came to the fore at the start of last season and I think would have gone on to have had a great season with Dragons obviously unfortunately the season was cancelled but um, I just remember that game when we were talking before about Latanya Wilson got sent off and Abby was left in the defensive circle on her own but came out with player of the match which is incredible really uh, obviously doing twice the work while also still running around as a goal defence as well um, but she's, she's got great fitness um, she's a really really strong player and she's come on leaps and bounds in the last, last few uh, seasons she just casually plays anywhere we decide to throw her for, for club if she fancies a goal at centre she gets a goal at centre um, really unlucky there from Elia McCormack um, just needs to commit onto that a little bit more lucky with the call 
Um, but yeah, she just commits on that one. She'll get that nice and clean one. Yeah, so both Amy Clinton and Abby Tyrrell for the Dragons, they've now moved down to Cardiff. They've both got jobs down there, um, which is better for them so they don't have to have that travel because their own players, I mean, Abby used to be at Thunder. Uh, well, Abby and Amy both used to be at Thunder, but obviously they sat behind and wanted more court time, so they've gone to Dragons to gain that, which they're, they're getting. Uh, but it's great now that franchises are in a position to help out you know where they get they can have employment while they're there and takes away that travel element because when you're training so hard and and studying or whatever it becomes very tiring and you haven't got the right recovery in place when you're traveling up and down the country so yeah and they were obviously uh, last season they were both uh, here they were students at Manchester Metropolitan University where we are today um, so they would uh, get the train down to Cardiff on a Tuesday they'd have training Tuesday night training on Wednesday morning very very early from all their Instagram posts um, and then they get the train back on a Wednesday and they might even then play for university on the Wednesday afternoon so it's quite a, a hectic schedule for them so I think it's probably the best decision for them both to move down yeah. to Cardiff obviously you know uh, it, if, if we ever get a Premier League season at some point through the year, that'll be interesting to see how that works for us and for them. But, you know. Ooh, good work there by Elliot McCormick. Um, just challenging on that one and getting the contact call against the shooter. Another good, good youngster that's come through the pathways as well. She's been in, in and around the Thunder training squad now for the, for the past few seasons. Um, so it's really, really good to see how she's progressing. And I'd say hopefully she takes her chance today to show Test and Trace what she can do. Good front pot there from, uh, from Lois Pearson. And a good challenge on that rebound by Barry Neal. Uh, Deemed to be out of court. So we'll just uh, give a shout out to the umpires today. Bit of a clash there. So we have Farah Jora, Emma Pike, and reserve is Sarah Gallagher. I'd just like to say thank you to those as well. They went through testing as well last week, ensuring that we were all safe to go ahead. So it's great that they still get to umpire, still get to do their passion. Yeah, obviously it's a, a pre-season for them, um, as much as it is for the players as well, obviously, because um, some of these umpires will be going through into the CPA season, so it's just as important for them to be getting that game time under the belt as well. Elliot McCormick is working extra hard in that circle, making a right nuisance of herself. She's combining really well with Rebecca Airy today. Obviously both quite, quite ranging in their area, so Dragons are just having to work double hard to try and find a way through them. Um, nice pop and feed there to Lois Pearson, which can quite finish it off. Yeah, I think Amy Carter's linking the play very well in there. She's yeah. Just another player that's kind of the silent but deadly type, just gets the job done with no fuss whatsoever. But she's, yeah, linking the play from defence through to attack very well. It's a very calm and steady player. Um, and the, just how she's progressed and improved the last couple of seasons has been, um, it's been really nice to watch actually as well. Some battles going on out here today. There's a particular one that's quite interesting that I'm watching um, quite closely now. Is this battle between List Skulls and Claire Jones? Um, yeah. they've, they've taken a few hits together, so we'll keep an eye on that one and just see how that one carries on through this game. The score's blown out a little bit at the moment. Um, 21 to, to Thunder and 11 to Dragons. Um, still got about three and a half minutes to play. But Customary uh, one in there for Ella Standard. Caution. Caution, sorry, one. caution. See, I'm out of the lingo now. <laughs> I haven't played netball for that long. I know, it must be. I haven't played personally for nearly pretty much a year. Yeah, I think I think my last game was like end of January last year, so we just come up about a year on that one as well. So, yeah, you very, very similar. So, I don't know what the lingo is now. I'm going to have to read the rule book before we go back to play. <laughs> really great drive through that and uh, good vision on that from Amy Carter to see what she can come through and take that ball. So that kind of leads us nicely into some of the questions. 
So um, we've got Graham Taylor. He says, uh, after such a long layoff, how have you structured your training to minimize potential injuries? So whilst I've got a fair kind of gist of it, um, had a quick chat with Karen during the week just to see kind of what they went through. And obviously I see in the group comments as the season was going along, but we, we work very closely with, um, we have a partnership with MMU here and uh, Dan Pike is our SNC coach. He monitors the players and it, it was from a very slow start really and quite frustrating time for the players as it, it it's they didn't get to play netball for some time. It was working on um, a lot of fitness and foot patterns to start with and really building up from just 30 minutes actually on court. And that's not playing netball, that's just on the court and kind of building slowly to to two hours and that was over a 10 week period. So so they really took the time because you, you have to be very careful and it's you use a lot of different muscles in, in playing netball. So it's it's building all of that back up to the match play. And I just remember even Emma Emma Dovey in, in the group said, I just want to play netball. And it, you know, it, it'd be so easy just to say yes, but you've got to protect players at this level because it is such an athletic and physical game now that you have to have all of that. You have to have the, you have to be match fit and you have to have the required f fitness back before you can yeah. enter into that level. When, you, when you're at this level and you're taking some of the hits that you take at, at Super League level, um, you've definitely got to make sure that your, your body's prepared to go back into that level. You can't just go from not 60 and expect to be um, performing at the level if you do that you are going to pick up little muscular injuries little aches and pains and little niggles here and there and that's obviously not what you want um, you don't want that in pre-season particularly because you, you want a good pre-season that's not broken up in any way um, and no potentially you, you want to you want to avoid those big injuries as we know in in netball like acl injuries and the like it, you need to ensure that you You've done the right SNC, you've done the right, you know, you build up your proprioception skills and all of those things to ensure that you, you are in the best physical shape. Yeah, I mean, you don't want to pick up all the little, the little niggles as well because they're the ones that can kind of grow through the season and get just get worse and worse. And Barry well. Neal, home alone there, takes the score to 26 13. Seven seconds left on the clock. Can Thunder get the ball back in for a last? Second goal? No. <laughs> it wasn't successful anyway. There's some uh, some good defensive play there towards the end of that quarter, uh, that period. I don't know if playing quarters. Um, a good pick up by uh, Lee Jones in the, in the Dragon Circle and then Ellie McCormick in the Thunder Defensive Circle. Just, you know, she she's taken her chances um, with two hands there with some of the, uh, the intercepts that she's picked up today. Yeah, so effectively Thunder have doubled Dragon's score here. What what would you say? Uh, what would you say Dragons need to do now to pick pick the game up? Um, I think they they need to just be a little bit more careful with the particularly the last ball into the circle. There were a few there that um, obviously the the Thunder defensive area McCormick got a hand to some that they probably shouldn't if the ball had been a bit more pinpoint. So I think that's something they they really need to sit and work on. They need to get the ball to circle edge. They need to stop and they need to really think about the type of ball that they're putting in. When you've got quite rangy defenders, you need to use all, all your, your skill and, and your wits to kind of to get the ball around them. And I think Dragons have certainly got the players to do that. I think they just need to be a little bit calmer in how they put the ball through because they're certainly turning over ball um, and winning the ball back. Um, Tyrrell and Lee Jones are working uh, double time in that circus to try and turn the ball over so they, they just need to be a little bit calmer and not quite as rash with some of the balls they're, they're popping in. Yeah I, d I totally agree it's working that ball to the circle edge isn't it and, and I think I'd like to see Amy Clinton back in there at shooter as that real target and, and, and them working on that and ensuring that they put the correct feed in there to, to reach her because they can and they should Oh absolutely I mean she she's She's got extra height on all of the Thunder defenders, so there's absolutely no reason why that ball shouldn't go in. But it is all about that, that final ball in. If that ball in is absolutely pinpoint, and defenders getting nowhere near it, 
Okay, so we have another question. So Let's. we've got a question from Maria Newton. The repercussions to health and fitness after such a huge break from netball for over 18s, how will we recover? Are we over Yeah, we're over 18, aren't we? Yeah. I'm on the job. <laughs> oh. I think, you know, we, the netball family is a strong one. And once we're allowed back, everybody will appreciate it so much more. And I think like we were saying, Thunder at this level have taken the, the return to play um, very seriously. And I think to a certain level, um, we all need to because after such a long layoff, it is really important. The last thing you want to do is go and get yourself a, a really bad injury on returning. So if you can while, while you're in lockdown now, take take some time to keep your fitness up there yeah. um, there's plenty of things you can work on um, and probably some varied fitness as well um, I know like yourself we, we do actually a fairly similar kind of training um, I like to do CrossFit and you do a, ver- a version of it you, you do the similar. official CrossFit and I do the unofficial version of CrossFit <laughs> the rip-off yeah. version <laughs> um, yeah and obviously we've been uh, cycling as well with um, one of our Oldham coaches and obviously former Thunder coach as well in Susie um, so we've been doing that to keep our fitness up but I know when we, when we went back for, for a few weeks I think it was only about four or five weeks with club we took it nice and easy to start with obviously we had to work out how to try and play with the modified rules we were told to play at the time um, but we went back in nice and nice and slow and just kind of built up through that as well so I think that there's always a feeling that you just want to rush straight back in there and get back on it but um, we're older our bodies don't quite bounce back as quickly as we would like them to so i would just obviously say to everyone just don't just rush first you know head in because we don't want we don't want you to get hurt let's put it that way um so let's talk about some of the changes we've got on so um i think for thunder we are now we've got millie roscoe at goal shooter barry neal has gone to goal attack list goals are still going to attack uh, at centre we've still got Amy Carter wing defence is now Elia McCormick she's gone from keeper to wing defence um, Emma Dove is back on at goal defence and another product of our pathway Millie Sanders is now on at the keeper um, and some of the Dragons changes now let's have a guess so we've still got Annika Lee Jones at keeper um, I think that is Layla Thomas at goal defence wing defence I think is still Lydia Howells Centre is now shown at O'Dwyer. Wing attack so for Morgan. Amy Clinton is out at goal attack, which is an interesting oh, one. Wow. And we've still got Morgan Dunn at goal shooter. Um, yeah, I mean, Amy for such a tall player does have really good movement. Um, she doesn't particularly like playing goal attack, but she will play there if, obviously, if she's, uh, if she's told to. Um, but it is a position she can play in. It's, it's an interesting one as a defender trying to come up against a goal attack that's as tall as she is. Yeah, she certainly had had some experience out at goal attack at Premier League. Yeah, um, we just had some some comments on Twitter with regards to our conversation about this um, All Star um, series that's coming up. Uh, a lot of people are agreeing with our take that we need these games. So Natalie Pepperell, um, you know, has put in place that it's probably safer than us going to going shopping, picking up our click and collect orders <laughs> or our coffee. Um, so I, I, I definitely agree. Um, it is something that I think we as a netball community need. Um, you know, we've been starved of netball for so long. I know we had the international series that we could watch of England versus New Zealand, but it's not quite the same as, as no one that's going on in this country. So. And that's why it's really important that a lot of the teams this weekend that are playing pre-season friendlies are streaming their games. I think Surrey Storm is streaming theirs tomorrow as well. Um, and it's, yeah, it's, it's just nice to see these players out there doing what they do. Um, and enjoying it and uh, looking forward to those games next week I'm really looking forward to the announcement of the team actually so when I know yeah. everyone on social media is really desperate to know who the team is <laughs> yeah we're not me allowed too, too. we're not allowed to say our hands are tied um, but I'm sure I'm sure you can work it out I'm sure you can oh, guess there's a few of our players that might be involved because they're not playing today really really good work there by Millie Sanders really unlucky on that one just couldn't quite get a hold of that one but great to see the back up. So obviously you know the, the Thunder players that are involved, you don't necessarily know the other players that are involved no. so who would you like to see? Um, so if you're thinking about an international flavour then I think, although I think it's already been uh, I think Liana I'd love to see Liana in there um, obviously you know I think she's one of the best in the um, Oh without a doubt she's world class 
you know, she, she's incredible and she brings so much experience. So I'd really love to see her involved, um, see her team back up with Joyce. That would be great. Um, I think mid, mid-court-wise, um, you know, I mean, there's a Northern Irish girl that's all right that might play for Thunder. I think I'd love to see her involved as well. <laughs> um, I, I would really, really love to see Fee Tona from Leeds Rhinos involved in there as well. Um, yeah, I, get, I think she's a very underrated player. She, I think, she's definitely, for me, one of the best wing defences in the league. I remember when she played for Northumbria a few years ago, we were always like, oh, you need to watch out for that Tona girl. Um, a great flying in set there by Millie Sanders. What's just what you want to see by you and goalkeepers getting out on that ball. Defensively, um, I don't know. A quite, if you were looking for an international flavour, then perhaps someone like Joe Tripp from Mavericks. You know, very, very strong to play both um, across both goalkeeper and goal defence. Yeah. Um, she would be a, a good one to see in there. I think, as well. Who would you like to see though? All right. It's a difficult one because I know the team. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure we'd all love to see Maddie Brown, but not sure she's in the country. No, yet, so that's I can, not going to well, happen. I can say, for, yeah, she's not in the country yet. So Millie Sanders getting involved in everything in this period, which is really good to see. Great ball there from oh, Millie Roscoe. Such very a shame. Just couldn't quite get her hands on it. Yeah, yeah Barry you... Neal's been showing well. Um, she's moved to the goal attack position, which is. And there we have the uh, the old head of Emmett over there coming through on that one again. Yeah, Debbie knows team, but she won't tell me, so I can't give you. I can't give you any uh, inside info that. I could give you who who I thought. Um, well, no, no, I'll just stop talking. <laughs> <laughs> this is what she does all the time. As you could tell from last week, she knows things but doesn't tell. Like she likes to hint and tease about these things, but then doesn't tell you, and it's just, you know <laughs> frustrating. As you could tell by my eye roll last weekend. <laughs> Bit no, of back it, and forth in this uh, in this period, but halfway through and it's 32 19. Sorry, I interrupted you. That's fine. You're yeah. used to that, though. Yeah. Yeah, we sit opposite each other in an office all week, <laughs> and I, I get plenty of high rolls. I, I hide behind my screen so she can't see me. <laughs> some good uh, interplay there between Roscoe and Berenil. Again, they've played together for. For quite some time in the Thunder Pathways as well. Millie Roscoe's another one of our um, good youngsters. I think she's on the under 21. Yeah, and Barry Neal's showing well there at a more familiar position of goal attack. Nice quick hand there from Alicia Scholes. Yeah, I think we ball. can see Thunder are using just, uh, just playing with patience and really building the play ensuring they put that right ball in, the final ball, making sure that's the right one. Yeah, some really, really good steady play, which I think, as youngsters, um, just shows how mature they are. But, you know, it's, it's the thunder way, really. You know, steady through the courts, that's what we like. But still moving forwards. That's a really good ball in there from Sean O'Dwyer. playing with patience it takes me back to the grand final in 2014 the infamous uh, <laughs> last second Helen Houseby uh, winner but oh. uh, just in the, in that final minute we playing possession we get into the circle like come on guys <laughs> that was the longest minute of my life I, th- I think to be honest that one of the longer ones I remember is the 2012 final when like Laura and Emma were just passing the ball to themselves across the line and we were like what are you doing there's still like two minutes to go stop it and I think it just shows that the kind of hard work that obviously Tracy was the head coach yeah. back then, and the hard work she put into those final uh, moments, re, you know, replaying the last couple of minutes of a game in different scenarios, so yeah. that the players knew how to play, and it was, it wasn't, uh, they weren't in panic mode. They knew exactly what they were meant to do and when. And I think you know all of that hard work clearly came to fruition. Oh, it definitely did um, in that game. Quite stressful at times. Cross court ball, they're not quite on their ones. Uh, a lot of coaches don't like those. Yeah, that Annika Lee Jones, she's got a great reach over the shot there. I think she's about six foot five. Yeah, six foot five. I mean, it's a bit tower over you. Yeah. 
It's like playing against some of these shooters again. But, you know, I think both of these, I, I don't think any of our shooters today are uh, a six foot. So they're, uh, they've all done a, a really great job so far in um, getting around that lean that she's got. Oh, Millie. Both of those are so close to that didn't, one. Didn't quite get it, but I love to see defenders having a go. Yeah, I mean, what we saw there was Millie, Millie was coming forward onto one and Emma recognised that and then she was trying to fly back um, into, the, into the shooter but just couldn't quite get there. But having the confidence to, to have a crack at it is... Uh, it's definitely something you like to see from the defenders. It's something that a coach is always going to scream at you. Look at the balls in the air for that long. Get out and have a crack at it. Because while she might not get it cleanly, you might put the player off. Yeah, absolutely. And what what better opportunity in pre-season to try all of, all of these things out? Yeah, and you can see that these players are an awful lot of hard work working on the combos um, in that extra long pre-season that we've had in that um, extra long to play thing, which I think, as you said, was so frustrating, but they've really put it to good use. So, we've just gone over 2,000 viewers. Oh, gosh. That many people want to sit and listen to us? <laughs> I, I don't really know what to say to that, to be honest, but um, welcome. Hope you're enjoying <laughs> it. If you've got any questions, we have already we've got some questions, obviously, that we've still got three weeks, but if you do have any questions or any comments, then please fire them through to us on Twitter. So we've, uh, yeah, we've spoken around uh, the pathway um, and a lot of the products that are the pathway. Our current pathway and our talented youngsters that are coming through are just undertaking um, a challenge for charity. So they're yeah. running, not literally running, because obviously at the moment we're not allowed to travel to do running, <laughs> but they're going from uh, Land's End to John O'Groats and they're raising money for Man the Manchester Mine Charity, which... You know, probably no better charity at the moment with really plenty of people suffering from you know mental health issues at the moment. Um, probably no better time to, to do such a thing. So, if you follow us at Pathway Thunder, you can see the links there. If you would like to donate, um, you know it's their bit of something. That the the 19s and 21s were actually allowed to play under elite sport, but. Uh, they've been stopped over the last couple of weeks, which is a real shame, but they're not sitting down and doing nothing. They want to, to take on that challenge and do something positive. Yeah, they're getting out there, they're keeping fit, but they're obviously raising money for an incredibly important charity. Um, Mind overall is a brilliant charity which just helps people that are going through mental health problems. Um, and it is something that's so, so important at this current time. Obviously, there's a lot of people out there that are struggling um, with the mental health, whether it's through loneliness, whether it's through losing work, whatever. So, um, so proud of the pathway for doing that. It's it's fantastic, and uh, hopefully they can reach their target and if, you know absolutely smash that target as well. So, if you can donate, if not, you know just give them some encouragement. Um, so we're just coming to the end of the third. It's launched in there from Dragons, but just a little bit too late. So the quarter finishes Thunder 37 and Celtic Dragons 21. So Thunder pushed on in that uh, in that period. Um, the young combos working really, really well for Thunder. Um, all the changes not seeming to hamper what they're doing. You can see they've got some really, really good structures through the court. Yeah, and it's great to see them getting more court time because as the younger and the coming through, you know, with the, with the five regulars that... Uh, that would usually pretty much be starting seven. Yep. Um, the chances are few and far between, so it's great to see them get a, a chance of more court time, of, of actually, you know, rather than a fleeting part of a quarter or a quarter here and there. So it's great to see them evolve through the game. Yeah, I'm really, I'm actually really, really enjoying watching these uh, youngsters play as much as I really, obviously, enjoy um, watching our other five players uh, play as well it's a really good opportunity for the the five training partners that are in this game and also uh, our training associate Rachel Towell who's uh, part of the squad for this game as well so it's another opportunity for, for her to show what she can do she played the other week in the game against Sirens um, so it is really fun to watch them as well and just see how um, they're going and what they can do and what combos they can create and 
Um, I thought Millie Sanders had a really, really good period in that one, so it's really pleasing for me to see how she's going. She's one of the youngsters that I've kind of um, been keeping an eye on over the last few years, just to see how she's how she's going. Um, so really, really pleasing to see what she can do. Um, really, obviously, enjoying watching what Berry Lois and Millie Roscoe put out as well, or are putting out as well, so we'll see what combos they come up in in these next yeah. few periods. Um, so okay, so let's have a quick chat. Back. Let's flip back to the All Stars. Okay. So, how close do you think the All Stars game will be? I think it's going to be. Oh, do you know? I don't know. I'm torn between it's going to be really close or not so close. Because obviously, there's some great international talent that's going to be in there because we've got some cracking international players in the Super League. But will they have the combos? like England will have I mean obviously I think in the press release Joyce was named and there were two I think Mary Mary was named in the press release and and Liana and obviously we all know about that combination between Joyce and Liana and how lethal it can be um, so it'd be really interesting to see how that partnership pits back up and how it works with another goal attack and another centre um, so I think it'll all be about how the combinations bed in um, hopefully it'll be really close, um, but again, obviously it depends on which players they've picked. Yeah. So that's but really, the, the All Stars team have nothing to lose. I mean, no. they're going out there, and like that's quite a scalp to take, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, it's uh, it's not a bad team to aim for. Obviously, Commonwealth Games champions, um, and I think third in the world in the ranking. So you might as well, you know, go out there, have a crack at them, have fun, enjoy it, and play netball, and yeah. make it a spectacle as well. So, what do you think to having it as a an annual thing, an annual event. So, if there's a space written in the calendar, I don't, I don't see why not. If it's something that the Super League and England Netball can facilitate, then sure, go for it. I think it's something that there would be an appetite to see, both here in um, here in the UK and obviously abroad as well. Because if we have Australian players in there, if we have Kiwi players in there, and we have a lot of, you know, the African talent that we've now got in the Super League with the Malawians and the South Africans and the Ugandans, then it's going to be fun and interesting for people all around the world to watch it. Absolutely, and you'll see more now. We have a lot more interaction from around the, around the world. People yeah. wanting to see what's going on over here. People excited to see what's going on over here. Thunder's so. never had as many Malawian fans as we've got now. <laughs> now we've got Joyce and Lauren, which is amazing to see. Um, and they're so supportive and you know they they're always on twitter they're always commenting and it's amazing to see so thank you so much and we have really really good support from the manchester malawian association as well um with that and you know the, the more kind of nations we can get involved in that the better it's going to be not only for netball in this country but also i think for community in this country yeah and uh, we've got quite a few northern irish fans as well i don't know why yeah I was actually on a, <laughs> on a Zoom call with their executive manager, Karen uh, Rollo, last night. So we have a, through Netball UK, yeah. we have a great partnership with Northern Ireland. Well, those Northern Irish fans know a split, because obviously no, there's, there's, there's a couple thunder, of players. There's, thunder through and through. There's, there's two players down at Surrey Storm in Emma McGee and uh, Neve Cooper. And then obviously there is Fee Toner and Michelle McGee at Rhinos. And obviously Caroline with Thunder. So their, their loyalties are split somewhat. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's good. It's, it, to be honest, it's really, really good to see that the Northern Irish players are now playing in the Super League, and I think it's something that they, as a country, um, need, and it can only set them up well in the future. Okay, so we will be back with you very shortly for the fourth period. Ooh. This is one of the letters from my manager. Dear Daisy, I hope you're being a good girl for your mummy. I wish I could come down and see you, but as soon as all these things go away and it's safe for me to travel on the train, I will. I will come down and sleep at your house and maybe we could go on a walk in the park. Love you loads, love you very much, Nana Jean, Alan. So we're now into the fourth period and we'll run you through the teams again. So for uh, Dragons, we've got Amy Clinton back in her preferred position of goal shooter. Laura Rudland back to goal attack. Uh, Shona O'Dwyer's back in the attack. Claire Jones at 
centre. Um, I think that is Christina Shaw back at wing defence. Abby Tyrrell at goal defence. And now Layla Thomas back at keeper. And for Thunder, um, goal shooter we've still got Millie Roscoe. Goal attack is now Lois Pearson. Wing attack is Rachel Towell. Centre is Alyssa Scholes. Amy Cass has moved back to wing defence. Emma Dove is back to goal defence. And Becky Eric back to goal keeper. Um, I should also mention someone's just tweeted me to say that we also have fans in Singapore. So welcome to all our Singaporean fans as well. Yes, welcome. The more people around the world, the better. Exactly. So just to be clear today, we will be pay playing five periods of 12 minutes. And we're just currently into the fourth. Really good front drive there from Lois Pearson, but just couldn't quite finish that one off. So quite an experienced backline now for Thunder. We've got Rebecca Arian at keeper, Emma Dovey and Amy Carter there now. So back onto this All Stars Deb. Okay. Um, are I'm you, not telling you. Are you? <laughs> I'll get it out of you at some point. Probably once the press release has gone out. Um, so it's England versus the Super League All Stars, and we've already established that they you know, there's going to be one or two Thunder players in there. Plus coach Karen. Who are you supporting? Is it a Oof. tough decision because you've got Laura and Ellie playing for England, and then you've got coach Karen plus a couple of players playing for the All Stars? Or are you just going to get some splints and sit right on that fence? Do you know I hate a draw? Um, and whilst it would be really nice, um, yeah, I mean I fought for the Super League to play out for a win which we went to so kind of following the international rules really that we we play to a result so who wants to draw but who do you want to win <laughs> um yeah one of those teams <laughs> <laughs> so Debbie's not going to get any answer on that I one. don't know do we wait as to how much which players are in I've got oh. most in which group or <laughs> well you do realize if you don't pick the all-stars team Karen is not going to happen <laughs> Yeah, England's my team, but the All Stars. <laughs> I, I, it just really excites me. It really does excite me to see that, and yeah, I, I just can't wait. And I, I think the netball community just showed as soon as it was announced yesterday the hunger for some netball um, is huge. That's why I'm just so happy that we were able to support it. I mean, I'm going to be really boring and just say that I'm looking forward to watching some netball. <laughs> From the comfort of my living room. Yeah, so anyway, look out for another press release on Monday. You will find out exactly who the team lineup will be. But please uh, feel free to tweet us and let us know who you'd like to see in the team. Yeah, who would you like to see in the team? Uh, who that? No, 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 oh, who, no the, I'm right, talking okay. to the public, yeah. I think there might be some interesting um, more fan base around what team they support. Mm -hmm. So that'll be really interesting to see. Um, just had a question come in um, on Instagram, which says, is there an equal opportunity at the pathway stages for young players that aren't six foot tall. Um, I mean, this Thunder team that's out there now, uh, yes. Um, I mean, Rebecca Airy is about, I'd say she's about six foot, just just kind of on that cusp of six foot. Emma's only five foot 11. Um, and we're looking at Liz Goals in the centre court, who is, well, she's like a dad. She's not exactly <laughs> very tall, um, but I'm she's sure got enough, you she's got that. enough, you know, fight in there to make up for that. Um, and Lois, Berry, Millie as the shooters, none of them are touching six foot. So, you know, I think there definitely is. Um, our Thunder Pathways, I know um, from experience from watching them um, and from just generally knowing who players are, that it's a massive range of, you know, height. You know, there's players in there in the 19s and 21s that are six foot plus. 
but then there's also an awful lot of players in there that aren't as well. So in netball, I know the last few years we've kind of gravitated towards height, particularly at, at the bookends. But height isn't everything. Um, and I think we do need to kind of get away from that. If you've got the skills to play this game, then play this game. Height is not all it's about. I think we, we touched on it last week when we were talking about Liana Leota. She's what, maybe 5'5", five, 5'6", five, five, yeah. at the most. And, you know, she's a world-class player. And as we say, it's about adapting to and, and utilising what skills you have got and working on, you know, yeah. if you haven't got that height, what can you do? And we talked about Liana, how how she used the ball when she's in possession of the ball, how she uses it and the body to get ahead of the defender. So she's always, I mean, she's always three moves ahead of everyone anyway, but she uses the ball and herself yeah. to get herself in front of the defender so yeah. and she she will take that quick release pass so she hasn't got that defender in front of her when she's passing the ball yeah. so yeah it's 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 maximizing your, your skills i mean you've got looking at the international side you look at you know two of the best goal attacks in the world over the last few years in nat medhurst for australia and obviously susan uh, part of susan Pettit for australia neither of those were near six foot either so it is about utilising your skills and, and, and working hard on, on what your skills are, what your strengths are, and obviously strengthening up your weaknesses as well. Um, you know, because not everyone is going to be six foot, not everyone's going to be five foot ten. So work on what you can do. Um, but yeah, I certainly think there is. Coaches are now looking for um, a wide range, um, a wide ranging skill set. So if you are, you know, five foot four, five foot five in your centre court use your speed use what you're good at so uh, a bit of patient play and a bit of luck there for dragons and thunder are still leading by 15 goals 46 31 with four and a half minutes left on the clock i'm good into play there with so uh, yeah if you goals. like you say if you're good enough you will make it and if you yeah. but it's not all about talent it's the hard work that goes into it as well and like you know being honest height isn't everything if you don't know how to use it as a player so you know if it's no good just being tall out court if you can't utilize that height in your chosen position That battle between Liscoles and Claire Jones is now amplified now that they're both at So this is uh, quite interesting to watch. Um, we all know that uh, Liscoles is quite a feisty player. Um, and I think Claire Jones is as well, to be honest. Yeah. So we've come up against her a few times when she's played for Huckercoat and uh, we know that from first-hand experience. Yeah. But I love a bit of feistiness in the game. You've got to have it. Bit of a misunderstanding there from uh, the Dragons. It's an easy pick up there, an easy turnover for Thunder. Uh, Tyler Sue on Twitter, I mean, she is a netball super fan and, and you know, we, we love her. And she's wondering if the All Stars are going to have a special kit. Do you know this? You seem <laughs> to know everything. I do actually know which kit that they're wearing, and you can imagine because it was put together at such a late stage to get special kit made would be very oh, well it's just not possible especially with the current circumstances so they will be wearing um something <laughs> a kit of a different colour to England but I'll uh, <laughs> I'll uh, leave that to you'll see uh, you will see shout out as well to Janice Moreno and all those that are involved um, in netball and watching over in Gibraltar as well and um, we know that they're the huge netball fans down in Gibraltar and um, so shout out to you guys <laughs> if anybody else wants to shout out just let us know I'm enjoying it so I'm enjoying seeing where people are watching this from um, so if there's any other countries that we haven't mentioned that are watching uh, obviously a shout out to the Greggies as well um, <laughs> Angela and Alan super fans always watching Someone's asking if we're going to be seeing Siggy Berger and Nia Jones. I have no idea. But as Debbie will not tell us and she knows the team, obviously, I can't say. Sorry. Anyway, talk, well, yeah, we were talking about All-Stars all and this is kind of relevant to it. So Rona Honeyset asks, 
with so many imports in the VNSL, how do we protect English pathways? Now, my opinion on this is, at the moment, each team is allowed to import, which I think is a great balance. Uh, we used to be at three, uh, it's now at two, so I think the imports absolutely complement the, or the, the home nations players that we have within our league. They bring something different. They bring more quality. So we're playing at a higher level. Um, I think Australia in the Suncorp Super Netball League, they have unlimited imports. And Lisa Alexander, their former coach, was quite vocal in how that was impacting the Australian national team. And I can, I can see that, but with just two imports, I think it really complements our league and takes it to that next level. I think having the imports and not allowing them to play in the same area of the court as well, I think that's a, a really good rule. Um, I've just seen some really interesting play there. Uh, Becky Air is coming to the floor again um, and I'm having a great fun. I think she's really enjoying her time out on the court today. Obviously she's uh, battling hard with one of Thunder's imports in Lauren Maguire. Um But I think it only helps I know we spoke about Leanne last week and the experience that she brought um, and it's a different style of play and we've mentioned that that actually helps your players so I think limiting it to two players um, obviously we've got 11 teams in the league now we have 10 registered players per team and obviously your five training partners um, if you only have two two imports per team that's 22 out of 110 so Whilst it, it, you know, it's, a, it's a fifth of the players, not every team's got to import. Um, so I think I agree with you, they're a really, really good thing. Um, but, and I think limiting it to two players is, um, is a smart move as well, because I think it, my personal opinion is I agree with Lisa Alexander about some of it, And I don't think unlimited imports is a good thing. No, and I think you see that you, you'll find a lot of the imports in in the same positions as well they, they tend to be that the goal shooter and the goal or in the shooting circle and and defensive end don't they yeah um i mean we would love more players to to come through homegrown pathways because for a start it costs a hell of a lot less <laughs> from my point of view as running a franchise kind of life is is a lot easier having a homegrown player yeah. because you, you, the, the, it doesn't come with all the the own costs of accommodation and the support and and everything around that so from my perspective it would be much easier yeah um however i do as a, a netball fan in general i do like the variation i like the different flair that players bring i like the different um and it brings people from around the world to watch a league yeah so it, and it creates and adds adds to it so whilst we would love to the homegrown players to to come through and I think we do uh, we talked about it last week didn't we about, around uh, the goalkeeper position and mm. where the future is there because all the tall players get put at goal shooter um, and I, I do think there is something that that needs to be addressed across the league and across pathways that because we and again it goes against the the height debate before because realistically when you get into the top level you do need a certain element of height in the circle yeah um to to compete and it's well that's only because everyone else is so tall yeah <laughs> if that changes i mean one thing for me is that i think whilst there is that percentage of imports i think what we've seen from the squad announcement this year is that there's actually an awful lot of teams that have promoted their talent from their pathways they have you know promoted from within obviously we've spoke about thunder at length um but i think you know you, you're looking at teams like mavericks they've got you know some of their players have come through their pathways this year um team bath are, are the same so there's there's a lot of the teams out there that are promoting their talent from within their pathways so clearly it's it's not hindering it it is actually only making it better because if those players are then making it into training squads or you're training associates whatever they're then playing up against those players but yeah. I think for me at training having players like Millie Sanders and Ellie McCormick playing up against Joyce who plays completely different to Ellie 
that can only be good for them because then they're learning how to adapt to players. Mm. So I think the imports are a good thing, but I think limiting it to two, I think that is fine, and that's where we need to um, to stay. Yeah, and I think it, I mean I often have debates with uh, with Karen around performance and pathway, and you know we I think too early sometimes within within pathways, and we saw it in the old counter structure a few years ago, and and it's not criticism because it's it has evolved since then, but. You'd often through that structure get a great lot of performance athletes, but when taller players, when the 12, 13, 14, and the tall so young, they don't necessarily have those athletic skills or that core strength yeah. of someone that's smaller. So they kind of get missed. And I yeah. think through you know players out here, talking specifically Amy Clinton and Abby Tyrrell, you know they're over six foot, and when they were younger, they they really struggled to get through those performance pathways because they didn't have that. They were looking for these athletes, but at that age, and I think you've got to see that vision of yeah. what that player could be. And if you improve on their strength and core strength as they get older and they will mature uh, physically where they'll be and actually what they will bring to your team in the future. Right, so we'll just run you through the team. We've got some interesting changes. Uh, so for Dragons at Keeper we have got Laura Thomas, goal defence is Abby Tyrrell, wing defence, um, I'm not sure, is it with the Hubbles? Um, Centre is now Sophie Morgan, wing attack Shona O'Dwyer, um, goal attack Laura Rutherland and Annika Lee Jones has moved to goal shooter. Um, and for Thunder at goalkeeper giving up about half a foot to Lee Jones is Millie Sanders, goal defence is Emma Dover, wing defence Becky Airy. Uh, centre is now Ella Standring, wing attack Richard Towell, goal attack Rose Pearson and Grevy Neal's back at shooter. So now we get to see Annika Lee Jones in her second position of goal shooter. Um, Interesting. So Dragons have got uh, good options with her so she can play at both ends of the court and it does give um, them a nice nice couple of change ups with the shooters and the so Amy Clinton who while she's a holding shooter is also can also move um, and then obviously we saw Morgan done before as well. So this is going to be a little bit more static, um, but that's a really good hand in there from Millie Sanders, uh, who obviously, as you can see, um, is quite a lot smaller. Yeah, but I was um, impressed there by her footwork, and she yeah. came off, she went looking looking for the interception, and they took the gamble and throwing the ball in, but she recovered very quickly there to get the tip out. Um, Someone's commenting and just saying, um, am I really out of sync with netball, but why is the five quarters? Um, basically, it's pre-season, so teams can uh, decide. So last weekend we played six periods of 12 minutes, and today we're playing five periods of 12 minutes. So still playing 60 minutes uh, today, just kind of changing it um, a little bit. Um, and someone's telling you off about being so tight-lipped about the All-Stars team. <laughs> That's not a... <laughs> Just not allowed. Uh, I'm proud of well. Actually, Pepper did make a really good comment about Nia Jones. Uh, someone asked whether she'd be in that team. Uh, she played for Seven Stars today, so no, I think that's an indication that Nia Jones will not be part of the All Stars. No. Uh, she's another player to win. She's, um, I would have liked to see her in there, actually. Oh, I think, yeah, that would have been really good. Um, you know, she plays across wing defence and goal defence. Uh, another feisty one. I love yeah. the feisty player. Well, she's you know. a dual football international, so um, when she plays in at goal defence as well, she does often give up quite a lot of height to goal attacks, but again, you know, she makes up for it in her feistiness and uh, in her play as well. So she's, yeah. she's, she's one of those players that you want on your team, but when you play against her, you don't want to. <laughs> yeah, she reads the game very well. Yes, yeah, she does. Someone said, are they going to be wearing the Thunder Rainbow dresses? <laughs> no. Phil I do. has those. <laughs> I did suggest that because I thought it would be, um, oh, it's just awkward, it, do, it doesn't matter, but um, obviously the uh, Nike will be uh, the kit sponsors with England and will be supporting the kit. So whilst it's not going to be a perfect ideal, it is something that's allowing us to bring that ball to you. Again, some some more really, really good patient play there from, from Thunder. Uh, Alessandrian in uh, at centre as well, now having a, a good battle with uh, Sophie Morgan, who um, is one of the quickest players that I think I've ever played with and against. Um, so that should uh, should be interesting. 
Emma Dover there coming through as usual. Another quick question. How many game day players will be allowed once the season starts? Well, that's one for you because I've got no <laughs> idea. I can't quite keep up at the moment, to be honest. Um, There's lots of announcements. Squad, of, stuff squad of 12. There will be a, yeah, there will be a few changes and adaptations, but again, that's not for me to say. Yeah, I think there's, there's lots of announcements due to come in the, ne- in the you know in the coming weeks. So just keep an eye on obviously all the different social media channels. Um, I'm as desperate to, to see what some of these changes are as the rest of you as well because I just want some netball. I just want some proper netball. minutes left to play in this last period. Oh, Alessandrin just to judge there to be slightly offside because maybe a big toe was offside. It's a good pick up there from Farrah though because I didn't do that. So I'm just reading through questions. We've got uh, well, a quick shout out to Leyland Zirkan's netball team. It's coming from Janie B. And Ali is asking, whilst you're talking about imports, how come Siggy isn't classed as an import? She's Brill and it's not a dig, just interested. Does Liana Leota count as an import as she's been in the league longer? Now, Siggy uh, was, or had an EU passport, but has done settlement papers, so she is not classed as an import. We touched on that again last week while she was here. Yep. Uh, and Liana is still an import, um, as far as I'm aware. Lots of things have changed from when she was with us. She was classed as an import while she was with us. Um, so unless things have changed, because obviously she's lived here for a while, still lives in Manchester. Oh, Emma. See, Ka- Karen can't inside. keep away. She's uh, commenting as she's going along. So quarter four, purring along steadily. Far from perfect and some slop in a stroke. Question, questionable decision making at times but this inexperienced group today are doing a good job for us I think Emma's going to love being called inexperienced obviously Emma is nobody she's the uh, she's the experienced one in this team um, she knows how I feel now when I used to play with them about being so much older than everybody else so uh, quite, a, quite a lot of this team are in their um, early 20s um, some of them are even younger than that Uh, well, we've just been asked to give uh, Chadwick's Netball Club a shout out. Um, this is the club that Debbie and I know quite well because two of our um, two, two of our office staff also play for them. In, uh, Rachel and Natalie also play for them, and uh, Laura as well, who is part of the uh, the Thunder. What's Laura's job? The Thunder. Well, currently she's uh, moving the camera for the live stream. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, she's the head of our volunteers. And Laura Green, who also recently uh, got married as well, so congratulations to Laura. Annika Lee Jones, I just used an all her height. Um, but Millie Sanders has given her a good fight in that circle. Oh, we've got some South African viewers, so that's good to see. And some American viewers as well, for all the way from Very New Jersey, USA. So, um, it looks like howdy? Rachel Singleton. <laughs> can we say howdy? Yeah. <laughs> you can. And stay safe. Don't do your American accent. No, I'll try not to. It's not as bad as your Northern Irish one, but, you know. <laughs> uh, oh, great really, play there. Great really triangle around, around the circle. Lois Pearson. I also would like to apologise because last week I did say that Lois Pearson's father is a table official. Um, I got him mixed up um, with Mr Turner. Um, who is the father of one of our other Pathway products, Imogen, um, who is now one of our Thunder Pathway coaches. So uh, apologies to you both. <laughs> I'd like you to get your facts wrong, Stata. I think I just got a little bit too excited last week about doing this. <laughs> so uh, finally Thunder stretching the lead out a little bit there. The gap is now 20 goals. So a real convincing display from from the young side. We, Ellie Cardwell says we're doing a good job. So hi Ellie, uh, glad you're enjoying it. Um, 
I hope you obviously play well uh, with England in the next week. Maybe not too well, because I'm looking forward to a really, really close game. So, you know, just try and dial it back a little bit. Thanks. Oh, great ball and great take there from Lois Pearson under the post. And she slots it away to make the score 63-41. There's just one thing about these maths that the coach of the way. You can't tell what they're thinking. <laughs> you just don't have a clue what's, you know, you... I like to see and be able to tell on the face what my coaches are thinking and these masks take that away but obviously it's um, a really important, really important thing. I'll see, there we go. We've got Newcastle Netball Club. They're our biggest Northern Irish fans, I told you. They all love thunder. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Thank you, Newcastle. I'm guessing you're not Newcastle in, oh. New, in Newcastle upon Tyne. Newcastle, Northern Ireland. I don't know where that You're is. Not I apologise. I've only ever been to Belfast. <laughs> Good contest there from Ellis Simon and a brilliant inset there from Lois Pearson. As a defender, that is one of the best things you will see is your attackers getting an inset. So satisfying. <laughs> not Natalie Pepperell, we love you. <laughs> um, this is not showing East Sky anymore, just get me a new on it. Honestly, no. The longer we do this, we will just descend into Babel. So thank you very much, Nasa Pepperell, but maybe it's left to leave it to the professionals when it comes to the actual coverage next week. Although we did, I did hair and makeup this week after last week. I, I wasn't tried, expecting to be on camera. <laughs> And uh, Kathy Ann wants us to give a shout out to Filed All Stars netball team. Oh, another All Stars team. Yeah. I wonder how they fare against the All Stars team, the Super League All Stars. It depends I say. on what that team is, Deb. <laughs> Just into the last 30 seconds or so um, of this game, it's Thunder have, have stretched the lead. Um, all the changes don't seem to affect them too much, and all the missing players either. Millie Sanders has given this a really good go in this period. And Lee Jones scores there just with 12 seconds to go. The gap's still at 20 goals. Can they fire it in? Big long ball. Yes. To finish the game and just make it. They'll finish that from Dragon. New five in Annika Lee Jones. Um, yeah, I would have liked to advantage. see a little more pressure on that pass in then. Absolutely no one in front of Morgan there. She put the long ball in, which was an obvious one. It was always going to go in with that time left. Yeah. So we finished the game there with six at Thunder at 65. Celtic Dragons at 46. And if everyone can see Ellie McCormick down there in her pants and jacket, that's how cold <laughs> it is in this spot. This is very cold. Uh, great to see all the players being very responsible there with the, uh, with the masks. And the elbow taps. No high fiving, no hugging in this game. Just a nice yeah. elbow tap. And if anybody's, I think they did have a comment, but Kerry and I are in a bubble together and we tested last night, both negative. Yep. Yeah, we obviously, anyone that knows us knows that we, uh, we work together and we've worked together pretty much all the way through um, all these different lockdowns. I don't even know what number we're up to now. But yeah, we spent a few weeks just us two in the we office did. on our own. <sighs> Which basically means it was just me and I was doing everything. Um, no, but yeah, we, we obviously um, spend an awful lot of time together, so and we are all tested. And we love each other, really. Mm. No, yeah, we do, really. <laughs> Sometimes it's love to hate, you know. Donna Lee wants to know, oh, Little Lee, Little Legs, wants to know if Thunder Bear is okay and is he hibernating? I, th I think he's in extreme hibernation at the moment. We've obviously not seen him for nearly a year. Um, it'd be nice to see him eventually, but... Who knows, he, is, he might be very, very different when he comes back out of hibernation, who knows. <laughs> okay, so have we any, any more questions to take? Shall we? Um, someone is asking us uh, about the, um, I think she's uh, Zimbabwean. Um, is it Zimbabwean? The girl, sorry, Storm, the captain, uh, the goal defence. I'm not going to butcher her name, I apologise. Um, but I, I, like I said, I don't know. And Debbie is zipped tight on it, so she won't tell us even if she, you know, she's not allowed to. And even if I did know, which I don't, I obviously wouldn't either. But I have no idea. I don't even know who the team is other than Joyce. 
and Liana and Mary because they're the ones that were announced. So, so wait and see until Monday. Oh, you, I think people will love the the people that are part of the team. I'm, I'm just really excited to see how it goes, how it gels, and I'm sure Karen is one of the most competitive people I know. Um, I'm sure that she will be doing everything that she can to win the game. Yeah, I mean, she's obviously absolutely hated not being here today, but you know, she's uh, she's got something extra to do, and she's I think she's really excited about it, and uh, yeah, it should be really, really, really good to see. Who's the assistant? Is it? Mel Mansfield, Mansfield from Wasps. So a lot of experience there between um, between the two of them. So it should be really enjoyable to watch, and I think it'd be really interesting um, to see the combinations when they are actually playing as well. And I think you know p people are kind of speculating all around Super League at the moment as to what's going to happen. Obviously, there's n no official news out there, but as you can see, we're all heavily into pre-season now there's plenty of pre-season games going ahead uh, there was one earlier at 12 o'clock that was uh, stars and bath there's one tomorrow so again tune in watch out you know the more viewers on there the better get your fix of, of live netball uh, a little bit of a break because we do have the england and all stars next week but this is our final pre-season preparation so the season is not far away exciting it is and really it exciting all will be released soon and and I think, like I was saying before, the work England netball have put into to what's going to happen. And all I'll say is you'll get to see plenty of netball. Hopefully, because obviously we've been sadly deprived of netball um, over the last 10 months or whatever it is now, 10, 11 months. So it'll be really, really good to see. And obviously, the more viewers we get on those All-Star Games next week on Sky, the better it is for netball. So if you can watch it, do watch it. Really ramp up those viewing figures because, you know, to, to get someone like Sky to put more and more on, we need the viewers. So if you are able to watch it, watch it. And then anything that's on Super League wise as well, let's all put our weight behind it and get those viewing figures through the roof. Yeah, absolutely. We need the netball family out there. You know, share it, share it to your teammates, wherever you can, get everybody watching it. Um, get all the men in your family watching it. Even if it's not your team, watch it, support it. Cause you know, we all love netball and that's what we want on telly. So if we want more netball, we've got to make the demand for it and make it so they can not show it. Yeah. I mean, I it's kept me going watching Premier League football um, over the last few weeks. So to get to see something something different and, and for all those netball fans out there and um, yeah, everybody out there, get your um, the men in your family involved and they will see how great netball is, how athletic and physical it can be and what, what a great competition it will be. And I think we've seen over the last even couple of years um, the change in the, uh, in, the, in the demographic. We're at a point where um, for a Thunder game the split was kind of 80% women, 20% men and that kind of even over one season changed to 75-25 particularly after the Commonwealth Games and, and, and what that brought and uh, and the World Cup and, and it was just great to see even in the imagery the, of the men who you know they, they come along with the, the daughters but you see them with a, a oh, beer in the hand and, and the, they're stood up so the daughters sat all <laughs> nice and calm and the men are up shouting especially in that first game of the season yeah. we played Loughborough and it was so oh. close and we came through for that win and the it was so exciting there like that the got to it. watch the men really buy into it was it was just brilliant and yeah. and I think there's so much more scope there to build our netball audience oh massively um, so I think we'll probably wrap up by uh, obviously saying uh, a huge thank you to Dragons um, for making the trip up uh, from Cardiff to play this game um, obviously it's a really important part of the season to play for pre-season friendlies um, we do usually head over to Deeside Leisure Centre in North Wales to play Dragons um, but they've decided to, to come to us this time um, so yeah thank you so much to Dragons for travelling and making the journey thank you to all the table officials as well and everybody else that's kind of made this happen and thank you very much to Tom Noakes for getting this live streaming going he's getting lots of practice being a primary school teacher and uh, doing his live lessons at the moment so he's, he's a whiz at this now so thank you so much Tom for, for doing this and enabling Debbie and I to sit and just talk nonsense for the past hour or so <laughs> well from the comments uh, you seem to have liked it okay and uh, even Welsh Netball um, thank you to them as well uh, for their support obviously yeah. they back Celtic Dragons Another quick shout out to Jill and Jay Stevens. They'll have 
breath of fresh air, apparently we are. <laughs> <laughs> if you had to spend more than an hour listening to us, you probably wouldn't say that. Palmer's Green netball as well. Um, I was born. I was from Palmer's Green originally. Uh, she's not a real northerner. <laughs> um, and a big shout out to Cheshire Academy coaches as well. Um, all of you lot over there that are um, obviously given Thunder so much support over the years as well. Um, so thank you so much for tuning in. And Tyler Sue uh, as well. You know, I think every every Super League franchise um, knows her, and she's such a huge fan of netball, and she's uh, a very enthusiastic support which is what we need at the moment so thank you so much to you as well yeah, and hope uh, Eleanor has, uh, has tweeted and hope she's enjoyed it I, don't, I wonder if you're on FaceTime to Malks again in the room next to you because <laughs> I know you did that through uh, through isolation in New Zealand watch films together stuff Aww. via FaceTime it's cute isn't it I know and it's sweet but they've known each other for a long time <laughs> good friends good friends okay so uh, so yeah we'll wrap it up there we've uh, enjoyed the game today Plenty of news coming your way. You've got the All Stars announcement on Monday. Potential press release from Thunder, probably Tuesday. I wonder what that could be about. And hopefully some information about the season very soon. Ho- hopefully, I think we're <laughs> you know we all need something to look forward to. So oh, there will be plenty we can to get look that forward announcement to. out. And, and like we said, make sure you're all tuning into the All Stars and supporting. You know whether you're supporting the All Stars because you're players in the team, and they're supporting England because you're players in the team. It doesn't really matter. Just get out there, support netball, and enjoy it. Absolutely. It's we will be being with you today. and uh, get the remote. I think this is it for us, because there's no more pre-season, no more pre-season. Friendlies and now no one needs us anymore. So, back to Sky Sports. We'll go back to the day job. Well, yeah, I will. <laughs> you can go back to running the franchise. <laughs> okay, thank you, everybody, and goodbye.